Hello, world geographers. Today we're going to go over the five themes of geography. Now remember, whenever you see this and it's highlighted like this, you're going to want to make note because these are some key vocabulary terms that you're going to want to review. So first let's go over why are the five themes so important. Well, geographers are concerned with three key questions. One, where is it? Two, why is it there? And three, what are the consequences of it being there? And these five themes help answer these three questions. So we're gonna go over what the five themes of geography are. And then hopefully by the end of this presentation, you know how this, uh, these five themes of geography can apply to a variety of uh, geographic questions. So the first theme of geography is location. The second theme of geography is place. The third theme of geography is human interaction with the environment. The fourth is movement. And the fifth is region. Now, all five of these themes are important and no one theme can be understand, understood without the other themes. An example of this is, how does Japan's limited area and high elevation affect the way their population interacts with the environment? So here, if you're looking at Japan's limited area and high elevation, you're looking at region and interacting with the environment, you're looking at human interaction with the environment. So a lot of these key questions that geographers have, they take the themes, uh, couple them together, and then they get to those answers. So let's go over some basic definitions. Now, when it comes to location, there are two different types that ge of location that geographers analyze. The first is absolute location. And the definition here of uh, absolute location is position on the Earth's surface. There are two ways to discuss location, absolute and relative. And on this slide here, we're gonna talk about absolute. So the definition of absolute location for this key term here is absolute location on the Earth's surface. Each place can only have one absolute location. For example, a street address or geographic coordinates. So when I address something in the mail and I put an address on it, it gets sent directly to that person. If I am hiking and I have um, a place that I want to go to, I will type in that place into my phone or my GPS. It gets the coordinates, talks to satellites, and it gets me to that exact location. So if we're looking at this map here um, of Rome, Villa Borghese is in Piazzale Napoli. Uh, 100197 Roma, Italy, and then if I wanted to go there, I could uh, put that into GPS and there's only one of those addresses. Uh, the Tiber River, which runs through Rome, uh, I could get to that exact location by typing in 41.907417 degrees north or 12.473889 degrees east, and I'll get there exactly. When it comes to the Roman Colosseum, again, you're looking at Piazza del Colosseo, 100184 Roma, Italy. So those are some examples of absolute location. Now let's go over relative location. Remember, location is a theme of geography, but we have two different ways of locating things. So the first one that we went over was, uh, was absolute. This is gonna be relative. So relative location describes where a place is in relation to another place. And in order to do this, we use the cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west. Now it's really important that we use north and east or south uh, and west together in order to get a very specific location. So again, let's look at Villa Borghese, and that's north of the Colosseum. We can look at the Tiber River, south of Villa Borghese, and the Roman Colosseum, east of the Tiber River. So the Roman Colosseum would be east of the Tiber and south of the Colosseum. And the Colosseum would be north, uh, sorry, the Villa Borghese would be north of the Colosseum, and it would be east of the Tiber. The more specific of the relative location that you give, the easier it is to locate. 
So that is the first theme of geography. The second theme is going to be place. And this definition is how you tell if you are there based on human and or physical characteristics. So let's review what does that mean human characteristics or human features. So a human feature is something that is man-made. So you're looking at man-made buildings, sculptures, architecture, streets. You know, if we go back to the previous slide, if you saw the Colosseum, which is man-made, you'd look at that and say, oh, that's the Colosseum. I know that I'm in Rome. Some few examples of that would be the White House. You look at that and you should say, oh, this is Washington, D.C. You see the Eiffel Tower and you should say, I am in Paris, France. You see Disneyland and you should know I'm in Orange County, California. I'm in Anaheim, California. Or you see that magic castle and you know I am in Disneyland. So let's review what does it mean when we talk about physical features here. So physical features are natural features that are unique. So these are not man-made. For example, you can look at this image and know I am in the Grand Canyon. I am in Arizona. You should look at this and say, oh, this, this has to be Mount Everest. You know, I'm in the Himalayas. Or, oh, this is the Sahara Desert. Look at that. So again, physical features are natural features that are unique. So I, am, I know I'm in the specific place because I see that human feature, the Eiffel Tower, or I know I'm in this place because I see the physical feature, the Grand Canyon. Let's review the third theme of geography, human interaction with the environment. And I just kind of have it written shorthand here as H-I-E. So the definition is it examines the relationship between the people and their environment, how people adapt to the environment and how they change it. So let's look at some examples of what human interaction with the environment actually is. So. It could be fishing, either fishing for recreation or fishing for food. It could be oil drilling, drilling um, on the sea or on land. Uh, it is people or humans that are extracting resources from their environment. Terracing is a really prominent example of how people with limited space interact with the environment. If I have limited space, but I always need to eat, I'm going to need to grow some food and I am going to terrace by having this kind of stepped formation along the land in order to grow specific crops. Another example would be windmills. How do humans interact with the environment to harness energy? Not just through oil or extracting of resources, but taking resources like wind or solar. So that is human interaction with the environment. The fourth theme of geography is movement. Movement uh, the definition is it examines the relationships between people in different places shaped by the constant movement of people, ideas, materials, and physical systems such as wind. So a lot of people think of movement as um, people moving from place to place, either from a bus or car or walking. However, movement can also be the movement of people through immigration. People move from one place to another, and then with them moving, they share different ideas, religion, language, culture, customs. Another form of movement is communication. How do people in an area, a region, or a place, how do they communicate with each other? Does that country monitor or limit communication? Uh, is Twitter the most prominent way of communication in a specific place? And if it is, how does that shape the culture? Does the government, like in China, uh, does it monitor Google searches? Does it control the movement of ideas? Another example is trade. What country, do you, what country are you in and who do they trade most with? What resources do they get from another country? Um, who makes those resources? Who supplies those resources? Uh, and that could be a real eye-opening when it comes to um, how strong the economy is in a specific country and also the relationship. If I'm gonna have a positive trade relationship with China or a positive trade relationship with the European Union, then that means we're probably also going to have a nice, good, peaceful relationship, hopefully with them as well. Another example of movement is just plain transportation. And this generally is the easiest for a lot of students to answer, uh, but it's also super complex because 
people move in different ways in different places. For example, in um, New York City, a lot of people move by walking. Uh, a lot of people move by taxis or they move by subways. And that's because it's a large city. Um, in some countries, they have really limited rail services, really limited uh, amount of paved roads and a limited amount of airports. So how people move around really says a lot about um, the health, the safety, and the infrastructure of a country. So now let's look at region. Region's definition is an area that has unifying characteristics. Now this is often tricky for students to analyze because there's no clear definition. In fact, when it comes to region, it's, it, it gets to be tricky. What's the border between Northern California and Southern California? Uh, what's the border between um, the Arab world and the non-Arab world? Sometimes people don't fit nicely in these boxes or uh, places don't fit nicely in these boxes. So I'll go over some examples. Um, you can define a region on land areas, right? I'm in the South, I'm in East Asia, I'm in North Africa, I'm in the Northwest. But again, it gets to be semi-debatable because some states or some countries will say, oh, I'm not in the South, I'm in like the Appalachian area, or oh, I'm not in the South, I'm in the Midwest. So again, a region is a territory, it's an area, but there aren't clear borders as in place. Instead, these are just kind of characteristics that unify people. Another example of how you can classify a region is through the economy is through the economy. For example, in Hollywood, they have, uh, the economy is about the movie industry or the financial district in New York or a financial district in Singapore or San Francisco. Silicon Valley is a famous example of a region where in the specific valley um, around the Bay Area in San, around San Francisco, you have a lot of tech industry there. Napa Valley, Champaign, Another example of region would be culture and language. So the Arabic world or Latin America or the Islamic region. Again, even if you're looking at the Islamic region in North Africa in the Middle East, you still have some countries in that region that are predominantly Jewish, like in Israel or uh, predominantly uh, Christian. So, uh, but those would be a little bit of outliers. Just like if you look at Latin America, um, most Latin American countries speak a Latin language like Spanish and Portuguese. However, the official language in Belize is English. Another example would be landforms, right? I'm going to the beach. I'm going to the mountains. I'm going to the desert. Now, if I say I'm going to the beach, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be at the physical beach 24 seven, I might be five blocks away from the beach, but I'm still technically in that region or in that area of the beach. So five themes review. We have again, location, place, human interaction with the environment, movement and region. So you look at this chart here, you're going to look at the basic definitions. In case you missed this, you can pause this here and write those definitions down or pause it and then write those examples. So let's just do a quick review. Which theme of geography did this relate to? Think about it. Five, four, three, two, one. We'll review the answers at the end. Which theme of geography does this relate to? Jot it down. Think about it. Five, four, three, two, one. Which theme of geography does this relate to? Think about it, write it down. Five, four, three, two, one. What about this one? Which theme of geography does this relate to? Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, this one should be easy. We kind of went over this. Which theme of geography does this relate to? Write it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Now let's review the answers. Okay, think back again from that postcard or that um, letter. This is absolute location because we have an address here. If you just wrote location down, that's completely fine. This one, it is region. Again, this would be the west, this would be the western region, the north central, south central, south, 
uh, east, midwest, northeast. And again, when it comes to region, it can be kind of tricky. I know a lot of geographers that just call this area right here the south. Um, a lot of geographers call this the Pacific region. Desalination. This is when you take salty water and you transform it into fresh water, and this is human interaction with the environment. This is movement, and hopefully you see this. This is the Columbian exchange, and this is the exchange of goods uh, from the new world to uh, the old world and back and forth. And this is place, Disneyland. So how did you do? I hope you did well. If not, feel free to review this video again. Any questions, feel free to email me uh, or chat with me about this tomorrow. Thank you geographers so much. Have a great day.